Welcome to this session about registering and securing custom Azure AD Secure APIs for Viva Connections Adaptive Card Extensions. I am Paolo Pialorsi and I'm a proud member of the Microsoft 365 PMP team. This is the fourth and final episode of a series of videos about how to create adaptive card extensions consuming a backend multi tenant API. And in this video, we will focus on how to register in Azure Active Directory an app which will be used for the backend API consumed by adaptive card extensions. Registering an app means that we will have, for example, to configure a proper return URL for the consent flow of the application. We will need to configure proper permission scopes for consumers of our API. And optionally, we will have to configure API permissions that we want to have granted to our application in order to consume a backend workload, like, for example, Microsoft Graph. From a SharePoint Online point of view, we will have to take care of creating the SPPKG uh, package of the solution and uploading it in the app catalog, making it tenant-wide available, and registering the multi-tenant app in the target tenant where we want to use it, going through the consent flow of Azure ID. And then we will have to grant the permissions uh, to consume the backend API through the API access page uh, of the SharePoint Online admin UI. So, let me move to the demo environment, let me show you all of these steps in practice. So, in order to register the application in Azure Active Directory, you need to open a browser and go to portal.azure.com, targeting a tenant which will be the main tenant of your multi-tenant application registration. You go to Azure Active Directory and you click on App Registrations. From there, you can choose to create a new registration, you will have to provide a name, which will be also used in SharePoint Framework in the package solution.json file to specify the name of the resource you want to get the API permission request for. And you will have to choose the multi-tenant option right here and eventually provide the redirect URI to uh, redirect users after the consent will be applied. Now, in our tenant, I already did it for the application we're going to use. So let me click on this one and let me search for the PMP Contoso Orders application. And here it is. This is the application, the multi-tenant application that I created for the sample solution. What is important to notice is the name. As I said, this one will be used also in SPFX configuration. The application or client ID, which is the unique ID of your application, and the object ID, uh, which is the internal ID of the object, and specifically the tenant ID, which is the unique ID of the tenant in which you register the multi-tenant application. So display name, client ID, and tenant ID. Then in order to expose an API, you need to click on the expose an API item right here, and you have to specify the unique application ID for your application. By default, Azure Active Directory will use API followed by the client ID, I would advise you to replace it with a, a meaningful name, like, for example, the name of the API that you are going to expose. This will be the unique ID, for example, that you will use again in SharePoint Framework to create a new instance of the AD HTTP client object. Then you can specify as many permission scopes as you like. And whenever you add a permission scope, you have to specify a scope name which is, for example, in my scenario, orders.read or orders.fullcontrol. Then you have to make a choice if you want this permission scope to be grantable by admins only, or if you want to make it possible for common users to consent it as well and not only for admins. And depending on what you will choose here, you will have to specify the admin display name and description and eventually the user display name and description. And you have to enable it. Once you have configured all of your permission scopes, you can then rely on them like we did, and you can see it in the previous episode number three, uh, we can rely on them in the Azure function implementation to authorize user requests based on the permission scopes provided in the access token. So from an API registration prospecting, that's it. Plus in the authentication section, you have to specify the redirect URL of the application, which will be used when the user will consent to your API in their own tenant, and they will be redirected to any of these URL based on what you will configure as the consent URL. In our scenario, in the sample application we're talking about, the consent URL will be the login.microsoftonline.com under HTTPS, 
followed by the tenant ID or common for multi-tenant uh, applications, that's what I'm using right now, and admin consent because my application is configured to require admin consent only, followed by, in the query string, uh, the client ID that we want uh, uh, to uh, consent, and the redirect URI to use after the consent will be applied. And optionally, you can specify a custom state property in which you can provide a string with whatever value you like. And in my scenario, again, I decided to accept as the state variable, custom variable, the name of the tenant where I'm registering, I'm consenting the application. This is an important step because if you don't consent, if you don't register the multi-tenant application in your target tenant, you will not be able to grant the permissions to use this API when you will add the SharePoint Framework package to the app catalog, as we will see uh, pretty soon in this video. So here I have configured my application, my multi-tenant application in Azure AD, and I have the consent URL that I can use to grant and to register the application in the target tenant. Now, we need to host the application on a hosting environment, and here we have the Azure function I'm using for this application. And here again, we have the functions available in the API, but what is worth noting right now is the configuration section, where we can see that we defined in the configuration of the Azure function all of the settings that we saw also in episode three when defining the settings of our Azure function. So we have the audience, which is the unique URI that we just defined registering the application. We have the client ID and the tenant ID, and we have the instance, which is the URL of the uh, Azure Active Directory tenant, which will be used to uh, provide and to issue the tokens. So these are the settings we need in the function app to properly support the authentication and authorization based on the access token. Once we have done that, we can publish the application and we can consent the application to a target tenant. So if I switch to the app catalog of my target tenant, now we will manually do what the PowerShell script that we saw in episode one uh, does for us. So I will simply upload in the app catalog the SPPKG of my solution. I can replace the already existing one, no problem. I will have to make my solution tenant-wide available, which is a, a, an option that I can choose when I upload the package in the app catalog. And once I've done that, I will have to grant the permissions to my app in order to access the backend API. And as I said, in order to be able to do that, first of all, I need to consent that application in my target tenant. So let me open a tab and let me copy the URL of the admin consent so we can use it to start the uh, admin consent flow. And here we are, and this is the URL I'm going to use. Perfect. So let's go there. We will use the currently connected user. We will consent the application, so we accept to register the multi-tenant application in our target tenant, and once we have done that, we will be redirected to a page, which is something which we implemented in the custom function. You can provide the redirect URL that you like, and in our solution, we decided to use a smart URL, this one, this one, which is uh, an API running under the function app, which will do the magic to make a redirect to the API access page of SharePoint Online. And here we have the capability to grant, to approve the permission request and to make it possible to consume the target API. If you will not consent the application and register the application, the multi-tenant application and target tenant, you will not be able to grant the permissions and you will get an exception when you will try to grant those permissions from this UI. That's why we created a flow based on the PowerShell script available in the source folder of our solution. And that's why I am highlighting you these steps and the fact that we created this, I would say, smart URL that we can use to translate the uh, constant request to the right tenant, the one provided in the state, in order to target the Web API permission management page. Here you can find some useful resources like the source code of the end-to-end -end reference solution called PMP Contoso Orders. 
and you can see an overview of the Viva connection extensibility as well as a tutorial about how to build your first SharePoint adaptive card extension. That said, thank you for watching this series of videos about creating Microsoft Viva Connections adaptive card extensions consuming a back-end multi-tenant API.